All right, so welcome back everyone. So in this series of next uh, videos, I want to make a new plugin, a local plugin. And it's going to let us do a whole bunch of new Moodle functionality and it lets me show you a lot more stuff. So right now, I've got the setup that we had before at the start. Uh, you know, just a clean Moodle code base. And we can load the site, obviously, in our browser. Here we are. And so, let me start by showing you what I want to do, basically, which is to make a new plugin that's going to display a message here at the top of basically any page to the end user. So, how do we make a new plugin? Well, we'll start with a new directory. This one's going to be called message. And we'll start with that all important version file. And here in version, we're going to put in the version of our plugin and what version of Moodle we require. So we're going to need something like this. And I've already kind of got this ready. OK, this is what we want. So this is just standard boilerplate code up here. And we're going to need to put in our package name. Uh, you know, just the standard boilerplate code and then our version number. Cool. So that is literally all we need to kind of make the plugin, I guess, as far as Moodle is concerned. We've put in the plugin into this folder and we put a version file. If I refresh this page now, it's going to ask us to do an upgrade to install it. Let's do it from the command line. Admin CLI upgrade. And it'll ask us to do it there as well. It installs our new plugin, local message. Just wait for this to finish setting default values. All right, great. And then if we do nothing else here, so we're on admin index, if we refresh, we've already done the upgrade, so it's not going to prompt us to do that again. And we go back into our site. We can go back to the dashboard. So what we've done here, yeah, we've just put in what component we're in. We put in the version of our plugin, and then requires is the Moodle version. So this is like saying, ah, oh, we need a Moodle version that's more recent than 2016 which is pretty old. I mean, and we're right now we're running the latest Moodle version, so obviously we passed that requirement. So the next thing I want to do is to show you how to put a message at the top here. We do that with a new file called lib.php. And Moodle has these things called hooks, which are little callback functions that it has all throughout the code that lets you hook in to core Moodle output in your plugin without having to go in and actually change core Moodle code. So let me show you what I mean. Let's first do one of these because we kind of want that everywhere uh, except that. And let's do, uh, let's do a new function. So we're doing a new function that's going to be called local message before footer. This is the hook. So we've written a function here. It's going to run every time Moodle, ren Moodle renders a page because it's going to look for this before footer hook. So let's just prove that by saying something like die hello. And we get before we, that's actually going to work, we need to purge caches here as well because Moodle caches the fact that there's some functions with this before footer. Uh, tag at the end of it. So we purged. Let's load the page. Alright, and we see our little hello there at the bottom. So we are running this function and how it's working is basically I'll show you if I do a search in the whole code base for before footer, we see here in the output renderer. So this is what it's doing. So Moodle is going to render the footer 
and before it does that it looks in all our plugins in the file lib.php for a function that has the ending before footer and then it just literally calls it so you can see how simple that kind of hook is this is in core Moodle in the output renderer and by us putting in this function we can hook in there and you can see that it's already output the rest of the page but when it's going to output the footer it dies and therefore none of these other you see how these blocks and stuff on the sides of the page they were going to load but it does the it outputs the footer first and that's why the page stopped loading right there alright that's cool so we can hook into core Moodle and do something before the page loads so what I actually want to do is obviously not not say die hello I want to put a notification that's what it's called in Moodle so let's just google that and find notifications dev Moodle yeah this is the one so basically what this does is output something at the top of the page and you can do it when you redirect or you can just add and that's what I want to do here so let's get that and put that in here now for message well I just want to put a test message just put that right in there and for type well we have some different types um, where is it giving us that oh, like this let's get that so that would be success and if I go to this place in the code so this is their lib classes output notification you can see the different types and that's going to change the color so now we've said a test message success save that refresh our page we see a test message and it's green that's what the success means and we can change this let's go to warning let's say what happens then yeah changes the color cool so that's kind of the core functionality of this new plugin that I want to make we're going to put a form somewhere where an admin user can create a notification we're going to save that into a new table in our plugin and then during this function we're going to check that table see if we have a notification and display that to the user and then once a user has seen it we're going to save that to another table the fact that this user has read this notification so we don't want to keep showing it again and again so in fact what I might do to start off is just write that down how about that in a readme and this is kinda local message database alright so that's the main things we want to do in this plugin so how about we start with getting our database tables set up so that we can actually store things into them so the way you do that and let's just look at another example like of another plugin so in an install.xml file this is passed and inserted into Moodle when the plugin is installed so let's do something like this and install our plugin again so I'm just going to take that, put that in, install, oh no, we need a directory first, db, then install.xml. Cool, so that obviously this is the wrong one, this is uh, different stuff to do with the folder module, but I just want the basic structure here so we can fix it. XMLDP file for local message plugin. So, I want two tables. I want one table to store the messages and one table to store whether they've been read or not. And let's not put indexes for now. We might do it later. And here we want to say, well, this is going to be messages, message. This is going to be uh, message red all right so ID message ID uh, 
user ID. And that's probably all we need. We could put the time as well. Uh, time red. And so we're going to create those fields in there. And what's going to be a message? A message is made up of an ID, which is going to be made automatically. A uh, message text, say, and message type. And that's probably all we need in a message for now. Now, let's look at this type. This type int. That's probably not right. Let's put that as type text. And we don't need a limit by length. Not null. Uh, well, we yeah, it can't be null. We need to have something for a message text. We don't need a default because that wouldn't really make sense. And we don't want to sequence it. Sequence would mean that it somehow will track uh, the previous and next message text, but they're obviously independent. All our messages can have different text. Message type should be the same. Probably. And let's look here. Message ID will obviously be an integer, which will be this ID in the message table. User ID integer and time read integer. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And they should all be not null as well. So everything's required for now. So let's just make sure we typed the right comments as well. Each record is a message. Each record is a a user record of a message. So this is going to be a lot bigger of a table. This is going to be one record for every single user for every single message. So there's going to be a lot of records in here. We might want to put an index in this table if we need to query it. Um, and we need to fix the path. So that's local message db. And the rest of that looks okay. Let's give that a try. So we've created an install.xml file. We want to install this into our Moodle. We've got the database right here. We obviously don't have any uh, any table right now called local message, right? So we want to install our plugin. But the problem is we already have installed it. And if I go and do a Moodle upgrade right now, no upgrade needed. So we've already installed our plugin. So Moodle is not going to care ever again about this install.xml file. We need to uninstall and reinstall the plugin. So of course you can do that in the front end, um, but you can also do it in the back end here. So let's do it like that. You go admin CLI uninstall, and this is the syntax you need. Plugins equals local message. So this is going to uninstall our plugin. Let's run that. So it's pretty quick. It's a lot quicker to uninstall than to install. But now that it's not installed, let's check what happens. We're going to refresh. Of course, right now, what's happened is we've just put a new folder in and a new plugin into our code that doesn't exist in the database. So Moodle will prompt us to do an upgrade, just like we did to initially install it. And we can do that from the command line again and install it that way. Now that it's gone through and done this success, it's actually done our install.xml. So if we refresh our database, and let's pop into the tables. And now that our tables are showing up here in our Moodle database, let's scroll down. And I think what's happened here is that I've made the tables kind of the wrong name. It's just called Moodle message. So here's our table and here's Moodle message red. But really they should be called local message and local message red. So let's change that because this is going to be, this is getting kind of confused with the other Moodle core tables here. So let's just do this local message, local 
message read. That makes a lot more sense. And we'll just do the thing again where we uninstall and do an upgrade again. And now it will have installed the, you know, the proper, the name that I want. This would be a lot easier to recognize. And if we refresh this now, let's see here. Here we go. Local message and local message read. That makes a lot more sense. Cool. So we have a couple of tables in our database. And we'll just keep waiting for that to finish. And that finished. And now if we refresh here again, we can get back into the site. So that looks pretty good. And we still got our test message happening here. So this is looking pretty good. So we've got our tables and we can see our message here. So let's close this. And what I want to do next is close this stuff. I want to create a new page somewhere where we can create a new message and insert that here into the database. So for that, let's make a new page now and we'll call it manage, I think, because we're going to manage the existing messages. We want to be able to create, read, update, delete them. So let's start with putting the boilerplate stuff in there, which is pretty standard. And now here, I want to create a page that, uh, you know, or user can navigate to. 